Hey everyone, I'm Melanie Johnson, one of the co-owners of Elite Online Publishing and your host today, along with my co-host and co-owner of our company, Jen Foster. Hey, Jen. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? All right, the economy is still kind of tight. People are trying to figure out how to make more money with their business. Do you raise your prices? Do you lower your prices? You know, we have a whole new take on this today. It's called The Generosity Mindset, and there is a book about it. And his name is John Ray. He's the author of this number one best-selling book. And we're going to get some really good business strategies today, mindset strategies, and coaching from someone who's a really well-known coach, okay? So <laughs> join us. Put your order on in the background, I always say, so you can record this, listen to it over and over again, get your notepad out, get ready. John Ray, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, Melanie, Jen, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate uh, your invitation. You know, you sound like you're from Texas. I don't know where you're from, but you sound like you're from Texas. I'm from Michigan, but uh, I, they call me a damn Yankee because I stayed here too long because I've been in Texas too long. And you just sound like all the other Texans I've met when I first got here. I, I grew up in Tennessee. We're the ones that got Texas started. Ah, there, <laughs> that's why. There, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some emails about that. So Yes, you are. <laughs> Well, tell us, John, a little bit about your background and how you got into, you know, all of the coaching that you do on, on money and, and value. Yeah. So the passion for this, for my perspective is like a lot of people, you know, it's something you struggled. I struggled with, and I got passionate about solving the problem and then helping others solve the problem. And that's the journey for a lot of us. Right. So. I was, I started a business advisory practice and struggled with my pricing. I saw my clients struggle with their pricing. And I saw that there are not a lot of resources out there for entrepreneurs that are having issues with their pricing. In fact, a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners do not know they have a pricing problem, mm -hmm. actually. And, and that's one of the things I talk about in the book is you know, that what I call the red flags of inadequate pricing that, and so I, I was passionate about that and try just simply trying to provide resources that aren't readily available to a lot of business owners. Well, let me ask you, how do you, in the book, you talk about redefining your value. So how do you, like Jen and I went through at one point where we were, we knew what we were doing, but then we weren't sure, like when we're getting started, like you don't have the um, track record yet. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden we interviewed somebody who had done a book and we realized that we were way more advanced and way more experts in our field than them. So we're like, dang, we're really good at what we do. Maybe we should charge more for what we do. We're bringing a lot to the table. So how do you get to that epiphany, that aha of redefining your value? Well, that's the hard way to do it. <laughs> yeah, we did it the hard way. Right. And I identify with that. So that's why I, I put my finger on it. I've got that in my history too. You know, when you push a proposal across the table and someone says, is that all? And they're eager to sign it, right? I mean, you know that there's a problem. What I talk about in the book is that it's not really about your value per se. It's not about what others, other per service providers, where they are, because the truth of the matter is if their pricing is wrong and you're pricing based on their pricing, then yours is too, right? So what it's about is the value that others see in the service that you provide. So let's talk about your service. You turn, you help thought leaders become established authors. Mm -hmm. There is value in that, that they see that goes well beyond what you see. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is all our clients see value in the services that we, the transformation that we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And those, that transformation is both tangible in your case, the actual book, right? Mm -hmm. It's also intangible, right? What can I do as an author now, because that book is out there? Mm -hmm. What's, what does that do for my ego? Right? Mm -hmm. What is What does that do for my earning 
capability, excuse me. Mm-hmm. What does that do for that? What does it do for my standing in the industry? All those things have both tangible and intangible value. And my contention is that we have to, as services providers, put ourselves in the mindset of our clients. And that's where the generosity mindset comes in. It's not about us. It's about them. It's about what they perceive. Mm -hmm. And if we have enough, a deep enough dialogue conversation with them, then we will find that intangible value and see that, that ordinarily we wouldn't see. And Mm -hmm. we can price to that value. And if we do price to that value, I've never seen a situation where it's not more than what we're currently charging. Mm, And so the client is better off because we're serving better because we know what their needs, hopes, wants, desires are. Mm -hmm. And we're serving better because we're serving best fit clients. We're serving the ones that see the value in our services Mm -hmm. and we're pricing to that value. So it's a win. It's a classic win situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like how you phrase that because, you know, you're servicing the client who is needing what you are giving and they know the value of it. But when you get a client who undervalues you and doesn't, and didn't pay, like didn't pay top dollar, they're usually not the good clients. They're usually the clients who are always expecting more than what you had outlined in the proposal, right? (laughs) They're always demanding of your time and complaining about service because they are, they already brought to the table that they're not your client, but you signed them anyway, because you know, met them where they were at with the money because you didn't value yourself. So I like how you were saying, you know, if you have the right client with the right you that's giving you you're giving them value but they're paying you what you're worth your value then you Mm -hmm. have that generosity between the two of you right and not just where one person's giving and one person's taking yeah this is not a win-lose situation right at at all and here's the other thing i would say is that when, when you take on let's talk about clients that are not great fits, like you brought Mm -hmm. up. So in, in those particular cases, those are lose, lose situations too. See, this is the, we like to think that, well, that, that client is getting something for nothing or something for, you know, our value for not as much as they ought to pay for it. Well, the truth of the matter is guess what happens in those situations, we end up resenting them. Mm-hmm. And we end up not serving them the way they ought to be served. Mm-hmm. And all that's the only thing that's wrong in this picture is that it's a bad fit. Yeah. So how do we avoid the bad fit? Mm-hmm. Um, we have deeper conversations with those clients before we take them on mm-hmm. <clears throat> and understand what their perspective of value is. And the deeper we go with that, the better chance that we have to understand that they aren't a good fit for us and that we can take care of them by sending them to someone that is, or at a minimum, just not taking them on. Because Mm -hmm. again, we're not doing either of us any favors. Yeah. And, you know, I think it starts with too, like you have in the book about the mindset And you hear about mindset all the time and you specifically say the mindset that's holding you back. And I've heard this, but I'm like, okay, well, how do I get rid of it? Like, is there a vacuum that I can go in and soup it up? (laughs) (laughs) Well, my vacuum is simply leaning into the value other client that that our clients see in us that we do not see. Mm -hmm. So probably the most important line in the book arguably is your clients see more value in your services than you see yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say it is not about the value that we see. It's not about valuing ourself. Now that doesn't mean that I don't think it's important that we take care of our self-confidence and our Mm self-worth. In fact, on the contrary, I'm arguing we can take better care of our self-confidence and self-worth if we, instead of thinking about ourselves first, we lean into what others see. 
mm-hmm. that we in what we do for them that they don't see or that we don't see. Right. Leading with the generosity mindset. Correct. So leading with a generosity mindset. And it's simply, why is that? It's because clients see intangible value in transformations that occur in their lives because of our services Mm -hmm. and that we just do not see. So, I mean, let me give you an example. So, and I mentioned this in the book. So I had a client, I got called in to visit with him and he, that needed some business advisory work. And, you know, the longer this meeting went on, the, the more I was thinking, I'm not sure why I'm here because he was going on and on about how they're doing this, how they're doing that they're expanding, you know, so forth and so on. And I was getting curious about why I'd been invited to visit with him. Well, then his wife came in and asked, you know, well, who are you? And I told her, and she says, Oh my gosh. She said, thank you so much for being here. She said, we need you so badly. We don't know what our business is worth. Our books are a mess. We don't know what we're making. I mean, she went on and on. And of course her husband is shrinking in the chair across from me. Right. But truth blew into the room. If she had never walked in that room, I would have had a different engagement and probably an unsuccessful engagement. Right. Mm -hmm. But she blew into the room and, and brought truth there that in the conversation I was having with him, I wasn't able to bring out. Mm-hmm. So she introduced what the intangibles were. Mm-hmm. That fact that their retirement had been sunk into this business and they had no idea what it was worth. Mm-hmm. And they were worried and fretful and concerned and solving that problem has huge value that goes beyond just the services that are involved, right? So that's why I say our clients see more value in this, in the transformational outcomes that we deliver Mm -hmm. than we we do ourselves. How do you determine the structure for your pricing and your offerings? Like in our business, we have different publishing packages. We have, and then sometimes I think like we have too many services because we do marketing, we make websites, we can do blog posts. Like do people, do you revise businesses to have a limited amount or to meet different clients in different places? I guess, walk us through how you coach someone for their pricing structure and offerings. Well, what I do is I call them engagement options. Mm -hmm. I, uh, call me persnickety, but I don't like the word proposals. We're experts at what we do. So we don't propose, we give options on here are the different ways we can work together. Right. Mm -hmm. And here's what I recommend Mm -hmm. based on my expertise and what I see from what the conversations we've had and what you've told me. And the magic number are three options. Why three? Well, three is enough to give distinct packages. It's not so many that it creates paralysis by analysis and too many choices. Mm -hmm. So, so if, and what I would say to service, most services providers, this is one of those red flags of inadequate pricing is that they do not offer options with their services. This is one of the big problems that I see. Mm. So what does that mean? It means they do a whole lot for everyone and they deliver a lot of services to clients that don't value those services. Mm -hmm. And so what I advocate is, you know, a good, better, best model. And in my case, those that's customized for every client, not every services service provider can do that, Mm -hmm. but I customize the, in my case, those options based on, the conversation I've had with the client, what I think their needs are based on, again, that, that dialogue, Mm -hmm. and then they get to choose. And I'm indifferent as to what the outcome of that is. And it provokes further conversation when I present those options. Mm -hmm. So that's what I outline in the book. And I, I think just the introduction of options 
alone helps raise pricing for service services mm-hmm. providers. Just that little uh, change to someone's business can make a huge difference. Do you think adding a fourth option is just a sales tactic that jewelry stores came up with? Or is, like, would you stay with three? Because I, a lot of people are saying, oh no, if you do good, better, best, and amazing, and, the, and that's like way the price is like super crazy out there, then they'll choose the best one. Like instead of choosing the middle one, because it's some kind of psychology thing of if you have good, better, best, then they might just choose better because it's the middle. But if you had a fourth option, they would choose the best. Do you, mm-hmm. Have you heard of that or do you know, disagree or agree with that? I, I've Does seen that, that but <laughs> I've seen that, but that gets into that, that gets you, you, you risk too many options at that point. I see. And, yeah. and, and, and for most, I mean, look, three options are all over the place. I mean, this yeah. is the car companies sell their different models this way, right? You know, Wendy's has yeah. good, better and best. And, and right. they don't even call it that, but you can see it on their menu. They've got their right. value me- menu. They've got their regular, you know, singles and doubles and so forth that they started that chain with. And then they've got some fancy, you know, pretzel burger with, you know, garlic aioli or whatever. I mean, you know, yeah. that's their premium option, yeah. right? I mean, this th- people are used to three options. Yeah. So, so it's kind of confusing maybe to have four or to have five or seven or however yes. many. It, yeah. it, it's very overwhelming. Confusing. It's mm-hmm. overwhelming. And the biggest problem I see with people trying to put together options is they don't price the third option high enough. Mm-hmm. So the third option needs to be the premium Lexus version with a driver provided. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah. what that needs Lexus to with the driver. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what that option needs to be. It needs to be something that's the kitchen sink and more. And mm-hmm. what you know, the service providers I work with, what, what they, a lot of times have trouble coming up with the things they're going to offer in that third option. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the work we do together is coming up with that because they haven't opened their minds to what they can do for those premium clients. And you price it so high that there's um, not a lot you're not willing to do for them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're in jail on Saturday night at two in the morning, you're willing to pick them up. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the kind of, and in a practice, you know, if you've got premium clients that are more than let's say 10 to 15% of your total business, Mm -hmm. then you're not pricing that high enough. Too many people are picking it. Mm -hmm. And then the, what you risk is you're working way too hard for too little money, which is one of those red flags of inadequate pricing I identify in the Mm -hmm. beginning of the book. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about how all this transcends into marketing and business development. So it, it's about making about others first. Mm-hmm. And if you are looking out for this, is, and by the way, I didn't like invent this philosophy, you know, uh, two years ago. I mean, this is like part of our ancient wisdom tradition. I mean, this goes back into ancient wisdom. This is um, Napoleon Hill. This is Adam Grant. This is Bob Berg. I mean, these are people that have that in, in recent business history, these are people that, that have said this over and over again, all I'm doing is applying it to the professional services practice in terms of business development, identifying value, pricing your services and serving your best fit clients. I'm just Mm -hmm. applying that philosophy to that work. That's all that's going on here in this book. And when it comes to business development and marketing, it's really about making it about others and serving their needs first. And Mm -hmm. when you meet with clients, you're there to support them. Whatever they're looking for is what you want. And you, what you're going to find is a lot of clients are not really in need of what you do per se Mm -hmm. today. They may be in the future and they may never be, Mm -hmm. but, but if you're trying to fit clients that aren't good fits, you're pricing them wrong. You're getting the wrong fits. 
and your practice is distorted over mm -hmm. time. On the contrary, if you are looking to best serve people, whatever the outcome, if you're willing to say, you know what, I'd love to take your money, but it'd be a waste of your money. If you're willing to say that you're unusual and you will stand out and you will stand out as a professional of value. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the reason people, there are a lot of people that will read this book and say, this is too idealistic. It will never work. And that's fine. There's, it will make those that follow this philosophy stand out. I love all that. This is such great content. I want everyone to go out and uh, grab the book, The Generosity Mindset, A Journey to Business Success. So please tell us where we can um, find you, John Ray, where they can get more information besides your book on Amazon. Sure. So you can go to my website, johnray.co.co. You can find uh, book resources there that are not in the book that I'm adding from time to time. So you can, and you can, of course, as you well know, you can order the book on at your favorite book retailer, either virtual or bricks and sticks. You can order any of them. And I'm also on LinkedIn. So I, I write about this uh, subject on LinkedIn about price and value and positioning and so forth and business development on LinkedIn. John Ray one, J-O-H-N-R-A-Y one on LinkedIn. Great. We'll put those up in the show notes so people can connect with you. Yes, I'll be in the show notes. So thanks for coming today. I hope you all got some out of this and go raise your prices and grab John's book, right? We'll see you next time here at Elite Online. Publishing is our company. If you're thinking about writing a book, please reach out to us, hit the author submission form. We guarantee bestseller for the people who qualify. We don't work with everybody. And hey, do it now before we raise our prices because John just told us to. So- <laughs> <laughs> connect with us soon. We'll see you then. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full-spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today all of their authors become number one bestsellers.